Bring in Texas Congressman Dan Crenshaw, who has been critical of the search effort. Congressman, welcome to you. I want to play the sound of you earlier today, and then we'll see if you feel the same. Watch. I've been hearing a lot of concerning things from people on the civilian side who are involved in this. You know, we've got to look into it, see what's true and what isn't. What appears to be the case is epic failure in leadership. Now, where exactly that leadership failure is, I'm not sure. Is it the White House, Coast Guard, Navy? I'm not sure. And knowing what you know now, Congressman, what would you have done different? And, and where do you think they failed the biggest? Yeah, so I still have those questions. Now, you've you got to go through the timeline here. Now, on Monday, there's two assets that are critical to a recovery operation like this in a search operation. There's, there's, a, there's a 6K ROV that's ready to go on Monday afternoon. And there's something called the Magellan submarine, which, is, which is, a, is the only thing able to be used to recover this thing if they're still alive. Both of these assets are ready to go on Monday afternoon and Monday night. Okay. They're denied, right? Because they need U.S. airlift and they need U.S. government permission to get there. So Tuesday rolls around. Uh, that Rolling Stone article breaks about the tapping noises. So that's being picked up by the Canadian military. So there's all this chatter about the, the tapping noises. White House gets involved at that point. They get in the situation room. They say, hey, why, why, don't we, why don't we send Magellan? So that's what they do. They give it approval. A couple hours later, they deny that approval. Nobody knows why. I have those questions. Um, now, it's important to note, if you had just deployed those assets, they would have arrived on scene by Wednesday morning, at that the latest. That tapping continues to be heard and chatted about in all these channels throughout Wednesday, right? that it stops late Wednesday. Right. They finally deploy this 6K ROV, the only thing capable of actually going to that depth and seeing what's down there. Um, this morning, it deploys down there, and it's and the, and the wreckage is exactly where they thought it would be. Right. So, so where's the failure here? The, the failure here is to not put all your options on the table, right? So, there's the, you saw that Wall Street Journal article about you know U.S. Navy heard this implosion mm -hmm. um, with with their acoustic systems. So, what what's, what seems to me is that the leadership, the Coast Guard, was operating off of this assumption that that was an implosion. Now, other experts in this industry tell me that that could have easily been the sub just hitting the floor. Right. And then you, then you add that with this, this, this tapping, which was apparently uh, in, 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 like in your standard procedure, SOS, every, hour, every half hour. You're hearing that throughout the day, Tuesday and Wednesday. It begs the question, could this, could this, could this have been resolved differently if, if leadership had just acted sooner and actually put options on the table instead of just assuming, well, it doesn't matter because they're dead? Well, let me just go back and take you back to the Wall Street Journal article, if I can, because if, what if, they, on Sunday, an hour and 45 minutes after this sub went down, and they lost communication, and they lost the ping, and they lost the text messaging, and then they suddenly hear this loud boom, they may have heard what was the implosion, maybe at that point they no longer uh, need these these vehicles because it's not a rescue yeah, operation, it's a recovery I operation. I understand. That's the assumption they're operating off of. And I think they, they need to tell us why they were operating off of that assumption. And they didn't, then they need to explain why on Tuesday and Wednesday you're actually hearing all of these pings that are consistent with an SOS signal. So this is what I'm hearing from, from, from civilian experts uh, who are at the site. And, then, and they're coming, they're contacting my office and they're telling me this. Mm -hmm. That's what I've been operating off of. So, so, so nothing has changed. Um, you know, it, it's a, by the way, yesterday and days before, these these people who are contacting our office telling us exactly where the submarine is. Right. They're, they're, they're saying, look, the Coast Guard is acting like it's a search area the, the twice the size of Connecticut. That makes no sense. We know exactly where it is. Yeah. The problem is they're not they're not employing an asset that can actually go down there and confirm its location, and then employing this other asset, the Magellan, that can actually pick it up. And by the time they even decide to, to do it, it's too late, right? That 6K ROV gets there this morning. It gets down there right where they thought it would be. Not in this twice the size of Connecticut area. No, it's right where they thought it would be. And they're finding right. debris. And I don't have any more information because apparently the civilians that, that were you know, there to confirm that it was uh, debris from that sub, they're kicked out of the room. So I don't, have, I don't have that information coming to me. Right. And I'm, I have real questions about the Coast Guard authorities and what kind of decision-making process was made here. Look, what, yeah. what, what's going to happen in the future? Should we put these people in charge of future recoveries? Should we? They, they can't seem to make proper decisions.
And I think it's a fair assessment because, you know, this administration has been criticized from the start, from Afghanistan to the, the Chinese balloon of just slowly uh, responding to a lot of this stuff. And it really, you know, a lot of people have said this should have been an all hands on deck uh, uh, event. And it wasn't. Congressman, thank you for your thoughts. We appreciate you.